Now, nearly 8,000 people are diagnosed with mouth cancer every year. That's one person every 69 minutes. A recent report into the disease has found that in the last 10 years, the number of cases in the UK has increased by almost 40%. Joining us now to discuss this very important issue is Paul Roebuck, who's a survivor of mouth cancer, and Dr. Nigel Carter, Chief Executive of the Oral Health Foundation. Thanks so much for coming in this morning. morning. Paul, just tell us what happened to you, if you don't mind. I, the story starts, I think, in April last year. I was on holiday with my wife. Um, I, would, I worked at that time in quite a high, stressful job. I'd noticed that start biting my tongue. And believe it or not, I sort of didn't think much of it. This particular morning, there was, there was blood in my mouth. I could taste the blood. So I thought, well, when I get home, I, you know, I need to get to the dentist. Went to the dentist, sat in the chair, put my head back, and she stared into my mouth and said, you need to go and get looked at why the hospitals, you know, don't look too good. So um, I went off to Warwick, to local hospital. They took a biopsy, so they cut a small amount out of my tongue. Um, sent that away, got the results back and said it was un inconclusive. Couldn't pinpoint just what it was. So I thought maybe it's an ulcer or, a, you know, then got another call from Coventry Hospital. They summoned me in and took a bigger biopsy, quite a significant biopsy from my tongue. Um, and then called me in on the 10th of August to give me the results. So I walked into the hospital that day. My wife was away, working away. We weren't expecting this mm -hmm. at all. Walked into the hospital, sat down in front of the surgeon. Um, he said, uh, the results are positive. I thought, that's okay. He said, I'm thinking it's a positive result, but the Good truth news. is mm. positive, you've got cancer. And in the room was a group of, quite a number of other people. I looked to my left, there were a couple of surgeons, another lady, so I said to the first chap, you know, what are you doing here? He said, well, I'm, I'm the surgeon. Said, okay. I said to the second guy, what are you doing here? He said, I'm a surgeon too. I'm thinking, wow. He's, you know, I said to the third person, who are you? He said, I'm a radiologist. She said, but believe me, you don't want me to give you the treatment. So I'm thinking, so it, it just dawned on me then the significance wow. of this story. So I turned back to, um, Dr. Walton sat right in front of me and said, um, he said, have you got any questions? I said, well, I'm a talking therapist. What about my speech? He said, Mr. Roebuck, he said, um, you need to prepare yourself. It could be bad news. The way we calibrate speech is on your telephone voice. You may need to prepare yourself to be unintelligible on the phone. I just laughed and turned around and said, don't worry about it, I don't use the phone. So that sort of broke the ice, but um, you can imagine, I mean, the presenter just said to you. No, I know, particularly you know, for your profession. I mean, absolutely. I mean, you must have thought that that's my well, career I did. over. I just, that's literally, in that moment, that is precisely what I thought. Um, and then really, a lot of people say, no, you've, you've, you know, you've got through this, but really I had no choice. I had to have the surgery. The surgery involves cutting your tongue out and grafting a piece of flesh from your wrist to replace that piece on your tongue. They completely took your tongue out? They took two thirds of my tongue out, yeah. So we go in, they cut it, it's major surgery, cut two thirds of your tongue out, graft this in. Then you've got six days to wait to see if you can talk. So you're in intensive care, you know, this is a six, eight hour surgery. So you're in intensive care after six days, you've got a tracheostomy in, which is for your breathing, because you can't breathe through your mouth. And the speech therapist came in and said, put your finger on your tracheostomy and try and speak. So I'm like, A, B, C, D, E. And I could hear myself, I could hear my voice. But then I'm thinking, am I hearing it or am I hearing it? Mm. So, I, And then luckily my son was at, in the hospital saying, to, you know, there with me. And he came into the room, stood at the end of the bed. And I spoke to him, and it was... But you can't imagine what it was like. It no, was just I unbelievable. The, the to, to have your voice taken away. It, That's a major, it a major, major, major thing. Takes some understanding. Dr. Charter, tell us why 39%, there's been a 39% increase in mouth cancer. This is in the last decade. In the last decade, and actually, if we look back uh, over 20 years, it's at something like 135%. Why? Um, Changing demographics uh, used to be a disease that affected older men. The majority of cases, over three quarters of cases in the over 65s, largely male, 
five to one. That's now changed. The uh, women are catching up. And if we look at the traditional risk factors for mouth cancer, they were uh, tobacco use, smoking, uh, and alcohol. And smoking and alcohol to excess actually increases your risk by up to 35 times. Um, and I guess that over the years, social habits have changed, more women smoking and drinking. Um, so that balancing out has led to some of the increase. And then uh, within the last 15 years, we found that the human papillomavirus, HPV, which is also associated, obviously, with cervical cancer, um, has a role to play in mouth cancer. And a lot of the ones that we're seeing at the back of the mouth, the back of the tongue and into the throat, are actually down to HPV. Now, there's a little bit of good news there, because actually they do rather better uh, in terms of treatment. Um, Why is that? We don't really know. I think it's a slightly different type of, of cancer, the ones that are caused by HPV, um, but they do seem to react and recover rather better than, than some of the uh, And what are the, the, the telltale symptoms that, that people should look out for? Because Paul wasn't uh, aware for, for a period before he was actually diagnosed that, that there might be something wrong. Series of symptoms, and, and we encourage as part of the campaign for people to be mouth aware think about your mouth you know people are examining themselves for breast cancer testicular cancer we really need to be doing the same for mouth cancer sure. um, and we're looking for ulcers that don't heal within mm. a period of two to three weeks any unusual red or white patches particularly if they're increasing in size or uh, changing shape any lumps in the head and neck area um, and any persistent hoarseness those would all be reasons to uh, get along to the dentist. If you haven't got a dentist, go to your doctor. Mm, I was going to say, that is something out. that your dentist can, can help you along with. Which uh, as part of a routine examination, dentists will be examining for mouth cancer. Unfortunately, they don't always tell you about it. Mm. Uh, so we lose an educational opportunity oh, there. Um, but they are doing but they are they are doing yeah, it. Yeah. If, ever, if ever the dentist grabs hold of your tongue with a piece of gauze and sort of moves it side to side, oh. that's actually what they're doing, is examining around the soft tissues yeah, in the neck. That's good to know. Uh, Dr. Charta and uh, Paul, thank you very much for coming in to speak thank to us. And it's a, a pleasure to hear your voice, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I really mean that. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming in. Thank you.